Uh, first of all, I want to speak about the course of these surgeries, the reason for these surgeries. Uh, I would say that it's the common phrase that bad results are results of bad surgery. And uh, in this case, they are uh, the indications for the endoscopic sympathectomy have been perhaps a little light and uh, the sympathectomies have been uh, done very widely, vast sympathectomies without thinking about the level which would minimize the risks. Well, the patients come normally to complaining compensatory or reflex sweating. Reflex in that way that we think that the reason is not a, a compensation of the sweating taken away from the head and hands, but moreover it's the lack of feedback from the lower sympathetic chain to the midbrain structures. And, and that is one way of thinking in the reconstruction shortly shown. Many patients have lethargy and they feel energy loss. They have often bone dry hands, dry face, and loss of normal hair nutrition. They may complain of hair loss. But this is difficult to estimate because hair, hair loss can happen also by aging. They have very often social and general anxiety due to the unsocial sweating underneath this level. Here you see the patient with a strict line of the sweating, the lower part of the body being quite wet. But, and, and one of the very bad signs, uh, very bad symptoms is decrease of impulse control, which of course the patients do not notice, but the doctor treating them notices it. They get aggressive, they, and uh, I believe that it is due to the worst rejection of the several thoracic ganglia. Sometimes they have a bonus sign as well. So, wrong indications, wrong method, too vast a surgery, poor surgical technique, too risky patients, heavy built, fat patients, they sweat already before the surgery. That's high body metabolic index, the uh, contraindication to do sympathectomy. In our method, together with Dr. Lin, we have uh, our golden standard is to do a minimal procedure to lead to sufficient result, sometimes even good result. We do not cut, we do not burn. And we use T2 level only for blushing and photophobia. If there is sweating in the face, level T3. If there is hand sweating, level T4. We should not induce any bleeding in the physiology in the primary pressure. And so this is so wonderful that I told the pictures how they should be done. This is a P2 procedure which I do. Uh, you can analyze where the ganglion is by following the intercostal nerve. The ganglion lies where the intercostal nerve goes to the synthetic chain. So you need to go from the up, up water, right through the space to the plant over at the lower level. That's isolating the ganglion. And when you move to the split, you may, in a, in a, in a horse, surgery, when you 
I, I personally made a mistake and put the clip on my three faces here, which was upper of it. And here you see the first rib, and this is the second rib. So it's easy to take right after the surgery the clip away, and the nerve enlarges and is. Uh, regenerates very very quickly so this is reversible almost at once when later taken away you should take them away within two to four weeks after the surgery if ever possible the different levels this was the level two and level three you go downwards here is the second second in the costal nerve to the second ganglion, here's the third one. You put the clip here and the clip here. The ganglia are very often this, uh, very often in aberrant positions. T3, for instance, may, may be underneath the fourth rib. So actually you, sh you should not count the ribs when you do the procedure. But follow always the intercostal nerve. Here is the other side of the third rib. There is always the, uh, the veins which, which are then very imperative to not allow to bleed. As you see, there is no blood drop whatsoever. When doing the reconstructions in the first we used first sural nerves, and this is a picture of, of a patient performed in 1999. Sural nerve grafts, two grafts from the spellate ganglion downwards to the fourth. And these gave fairly sufficient, fairly, uh, even good results in some patients. Nowadays we use intercostal nerves which are turned upwards to the stellate ganglion which is here either cut totally or partly and the, the, the other part is then guided to, downwards to the first still viable ganglion here is a satisfactory result, re reversal technically the intercostal, the intercostal nerve is turned upwards to the stellate ganglion here and downwards to the ganglion underneath. In several cases there are so many adherences that it's quite impossible to go down enough and if there has been several levels sympathectomy as many very often is two three four even five then i i don't see it possible to unite with a single nerve graph because it does not cause any regeneration it's too it's taken it's simply too long the nerve graft then i have been using only this in innervation of the stellate ganglion upwards in the hope that the inhibiting effect would be enough for the compensatory sweating to decrease. But I have had a couple of failures where the patients feel that they have even more sweating after the surgery and so if I see such a case I do not use this method I rather than do only only a neurolysis, even though it may not use any good, be of any use, but this may cause the situation to become worse. Here a video presentation. Uh, of course, crucial is to find the stellate ganglion which is often behind the fat layers here we come with the third trocar on the chest costal nerve just 
burning laterally, cutting the muscles, and and uh, taking it. The small vessels can be teared and then saving the most medial ones. And the medial connection to the spinal cord is preserved, thus making the possible the impulses to travel along the nerve to upwards to the stellate ganglion. The nerve is cut, and then uh, we look at the lower part of the nerve to assure that there is still bleeding. We go to the lower part where the surgeon has not been to find a viable nerve which is cut. And then we turn the nerve up inside it and guide it lower to the, to the lower anastomosis. So, I feel it of utmost importance to keep strict indications and use clamping and not burning or cutting in the original operation to avoid torture and cutting. That is important. And if you have to do the reconstruction, then the intercostal nerve has proved to be superior. It, it may be regarded as a living graft, at least partly. And it can be harvested quite simply and atraumatically. Tissue glue is enough in anastomosis. I have been using also tissue glue in in the newborn babies for their plexus reconstructions and it, it, it is fairly enough. You need not to use sutures or any metals. And sympathetic chain should be united with a bypass graft. This is important. And I hope that in addition this intercostal neurotization might help to inhibit the reflex sweating. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Berata. Any comments? Uh, could you comment uh, in, about the results that you have uh, obtained? Yeah, 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 uh, I, would, I would be glad to, but uh, I have made an uh, made a ma ma made a study of 51 patients out of these 380 and 81% had satisfactory results, satisfactory to good results. And in these patients nobody felt to have uh, worse than before result. But I haven't had a single Finnish patient all the patients come from far away abroad. They come from Australia, Japan, South America, United States. And so a decent follow-up is impossible to make. We have been using in the follow-up, in these cases which come from Central Europe, uh, sweat measuring in, together with Dr. Christoph Sitt, uh, in uh, in uh, conditioned circumstances and um, stressing with a hot cup of tea or water to induce the sweating before the surgery and after the surgery, two months after the surgery and six months after the surgery. But we haven't got more than 10 patients in these uh, in these follow-ups, even though they are paid to come to the follow-up studies. But they, they are not so willing to come. So, question on the floor. Uh, just in the technique you showed us, you said you keep the posterior end, the spinal end of the intercostal nerve. And so, how you do the anastomosis? How you put it between the 
to the parts of the sympathetic chain. Uh, the anastomosis is done just putting gently the two worm-like nerves together. It, it is never easy, but because the patient is lying on, on the chest, it can be manipulated slowly that it's just end to end. And then you put the glue and you wait for one minute so that the glue stabilizes the nerve. But what about the other end of the sympathetic chain? The, the lower end? This is for the lower upper end. end. Yes. Sim similarly in the lower end. And so you have to divide the whole nerve. Excuse me? Because you said you, le you leave the uh, posterior or the spinal end of the intercostal nerve alone. You don't cut or you cut it. This is what I understood from your presentation. Um, do you divide the intercostal nerve from both sides or only from one side? Uh, on both sides. Okay. Yeah. You use the first anastomosis in the upper part is lateral terminal. And then goes down to a yes. terminal terminal. Yes. You see what I mean? So it's a lateral terminal in the first uh, in the upper part and then goes down. It, to it, it is an end to end in both cases, but the nerve is cut either partly or totally, so that uh, there are two ends towards the cellulite ganglion. One which goes to the intercostal nerve, left in connection w w with, uh, with the radial end. And the other one is a, practically a free graft between cellulite ganglion and the lower viable ganglion. So if you use the, if you are using clips, do you have to use this technique, or you don't need to use it? Yeah, if you use when you're using clips, you just take away the clips. Yeah, and it's only for the, the cut ones. Only. Use this technique for the cut ones. For the cut sympathetic only. Yes. Only, yes. only in, cut, in cutting sympathetic. Only in sympathetic to me is done by the older method. Sorry.